Welcome back to Scale Speedworks. My name's Mike. Two things rather quickly. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the length of this video, but I will be reviewing two kits. Secondly, I do have shop cards available, so if you'd like one, please stay tuned until the end of the video to find out how to get one. Thank you. Today, in this episode of Classic Kit Review, we're going to be taking a look at the Chevrolet Beretta. I'll cover a brief history of the car, then we'll dive in to the kit itself. Thanks for stopping by today, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Classic Kit Review. Let's get started. While other domestic manufacturers of the era turned to their Japanese counterparts for the two-door, two-plus-two sports cars, Chevrolet, for the 1987 model year, created their own two-door sports coupe. Based on the front-wheel drive Corsica, the Beretta powertrain was nothing exceptional. Using the same four-cylinder and V6 engines that powered other mundane vehicles in the Chevrolet lineup of Cavaliers, Celebrities, and Corsicas. For 1988, however, Chevrolet developed the top-of-the-line GTU trim. While still offering the same 2.8-liter V6, the GTU was little more than a body kit, featuring a rear spoiler, front air dam, and side skirts, color-matched grille, unique wheels, commonly referred to as meat slicers among the car's fan base, and a graphics package, which included GTU stickers and a Beretta windshield graphic, along with a suspension upgrade. GTUs were only available in black, red, and white. Inside, GTU buyers got a Beretta GT interior with GTU badging, but little else to indicate that their coupe was significantly different from the less expensive GT models. The Beretta GTU was priced on par with IROC Zs of the day, making the GTU a tough sell. In 1990, a Chevrolet Beretta convertible was revealed as the official pace car of the Indianapolis 500. Although a production version of the convertible was announced, only five convertibles were ever produced due to the convertible suffering from failed rear impact crash tests and serious body flex, the basket handle style roll bar doing little to add stability to the car. Still, Chevrolet produced 7,500 limited edition Beretta Indy Pace Car replicas, all hardtops, to be sold at dealerships to commemorate the big event. All were painted in either turquoise or sunfire yellow and had unique interior trim and badging. What the Beretta really needed was a performance engine, and that's just what it got in 1990 with the GTZ, which took performance a serious step forward. The higher performance, sharper handling Beretta GTZ replaced the GTU in the lineup, adding a firmer suspension tune and a dual overhead cam 2.3 liter 180 horsepower high output quad 4 Oldsmobile engine. Available only with a 5 speed manual transmission, the GTZ had other unique features such as a blocked off grille, a unique front air dam and rear spoiler, body colored 16 inch wheels, and a complete absence of any chrome trim. The GTZ also added air conditioning, fog lights, and a leather wrap steering wheel. In their first year, GTZs accounted for 7.5% of all Beretta sales, but after the initial launch, GTZ sales and Beretta sales in general began a steady decline every year of production as the market turned away from two-door sports coupes. There were a multitude of factors with the GTZ in particular to contend with. The quad four engine was quick but noisy. It demanded expensive premium fuel and was only available with the rough shifting manual transmission. It also had reliability issues known to suffer from cracked engine block heads and blown head gaskets. In 1994, hoping for a rebound in sales, the GTZ was replaced by the Beretta Z26, which used a redesigned 3.1 liter V6 that gained 20 horsepower over the previous iteration, topping out at 160. The new package was available only with a new 4-speed automatic transmission. By its final years, the Beretta lagged behind its rivals in style and image. Although the Beretta offered more interior space than most sport coupes, at the end of the day, that wasn't enough to save the Beretta from its eventual fate. The last Beretta rolled off the assembly line July 30th, 1996. There was no direct replacement for the Beretta in the Chevrolet lineup. MPC got into the Beretta craze, offering a new tool of the Beretta GT in 1988. As MPC gradually folded into AMT in 1989, the Beretta was updated 
in the form of a 3-in-1 GTU kit. AMT brought us two more releases of the Beretta, both in GTZ trim in 1991. The first release featured the closed off grille, while the second release showed the open slotted style grille on the front box art. Both GTZ kits included the Oldsmobile Quad 4, while the GTU included the 3.1 V6. The kits offered many unique features, including optional turbochargers and rear window louvers. Ravel got into the Beretta action as well, releasing a Pro Street kit in 1988 and again in 2016. Now that we have a little background, let's dive into the kit itself and take a look. I'm pretty stoked about this. Let's take a look. Let's start with GTU first. Stock version, custom version. The 2.8 V6. All right. Let's open this up, see what's inside. Here's a glass. Glass looks pretty good. I'm going to put the glass in here. Bear with me. I'm going to set that aside. Got the instructions. Take a look at these in just a bit. I'll set those aside. Now the body has already been painted. It looks like it's been spray painted with a gray. And I did not do this. I I I must have purchased the kit like this. This was none of my doing. So all this has been glued on, the side skirts, front lip spoiler, rear spoiler on the back, that's all, all been glued on. These two down here, those are separate pieces. But overall, the body looks pretty good. A little bit of trim work here looks nice. A little bit of clean up there. All right. Body looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Here's the grill. A little bit of flash here on the side of the grill, but that's pretty cool. How it's a it's a separate piece and can be painted and detailed. Here's some of the engine components. It's a radiator. Here's a fan. All that looks pretty good. Little a little bit of flash. Not too bad. Uh, here's some of the optional parts. Rear window louver. Actually, I like that. That looks pretty, pretty neat. I don't know if I'm going to be putting that on the body. It's kind of a, it's a big piece to fit on there. I don't know. We'll see. Here's the optional hood with some built-in louvers. Those are uh, reminiscent of some. Camaro hood louvers. The chassis. The chassis looks all right. It, you know what? It, I do. Ha I can. I can say this. It's very clean. It's very clean. The detail that is here looks pretty good. The suspension, again, the detail that is there looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the chrome real quick. Here are the standard Beretta wheels. Those are, chrome looks a little dirty, but maybe that's just because it's been sitting in the box. Standard Beretta wheels. These are the Beretta uh, GTU wheels. Here's the headlights and the grill fits in right here. Some valve covers, chrome plated starter and alternator. Some other chrome parts, engine parts. Chrome looks, looks halfway decent. Let's see what else we have. The interior bucket 
There's a texture on the, the floor, so that's nice. Replicating carpet, the seats, detail. Uh, it's there, it's minimal, but it's there. Now this I don't like, and it's not gonna be too easy to see, but there are a couple of sink marks right on top of the seat. That's rather disappointing. There's also a little detail that needs to be filled in. Looks like right in here in the armrest. Detail on the doors. It's there. It's real shallow, but it's there. Here's the standard hood. Looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the underside. The underside has some texture on it. It's not what I'd like to see. You know, you know what it actually looks like? It actually looks like a wood grain texture. That's a little odd, but it has texture on it nonetheless. Front seats. And front seats look okay. Shallow detail in the seats themselves, but it looks all right. Here's our dashboard. Very, very faint detail for the speedometer up there. And then here's the radio and the HVAC controls. Uh, details there look okay. It's gonna be difficult to pick those out, but it can be done. Beretta embossed in the dashboard up here. There's a glove box. All right, let's take a look, see what else we have. In the box, the engine that's been started. a tiny little v6 let's see what else the beretta taillight panel i don't know if you guys can see that it does say beretta right here in the middle taillight panel looks good let's take a look at the tires real nice tread to these these are solid tires and they do say goodyear eagle vr50 those are those are nice tires same tires I think that we saw in the Dodge Stealth kit and Ford Taurus SHO kit. So tires are very, very similar. Here again is a Beretta windshield graphic and the GTU side stickers. So not much as far as decal sheet goes, but that's all right. All right, let me put stuff back in the box. Before we get in, to the other kit, let's take a look at the instruction sheet. This is a three in one, nice. Uh, assembled in one of three ways. You, so you could actually build a breaded GT, the GTU or the turbo. Instruction sheet looks really nice, I do have to say. The optional turbo. Interior assembly, the wheels. So there are the GT wheels and the GTU wheels. So, so that's fine, that's good. Transmission. Let's come back up here. The exhaust, the rear suspension. Some optional parts, there you go. The side window louvers, the rear window louvers. It does show you maybe how to paint that tail light panel. Oh yeah, black and silver, so that's cool, I like that. There's the assembly of the front. All right, so let me get this back in the box and I'll be right back. Let's turn our attention to the GTZ, see what we got. Let's 
set that aside, the instruction sheet. Here's those, uh, those window louvers again. Here's a grill. It's that solid blocked off grill. Some suspension pieces. Looks like a lot of pieces have fallen off in this kit. That's all right. Dashboard looks very, very similar to the Beretta GTU seats. The engraving on these seats looks pretty good. It's a little bit deeper than on the GTU. Here's the engine block pieces. The engine block looks real nice. Actually, the entire engine, the engraving looks real nice. Real good detail on there. And it's probably going to be hard to see on the catalytic converter. Really nice detail on there. Not that you need great detail on a catalytic converter. But it, it does have a, a little bit of texture on there. And it looks really sharp. All right. Center caps for the wheels. Those could be painted up body color. Wheel backs. Got the glass here. It's the same as the other kit. I already checked. The hood. And again, the under hood detail, very, very minimal. And again, it has this weird wood grain texture on here. All right, let's take a look at the body. Body looks real sharp. I, I really like the detail. The the engraving and the doors is real nice and real deep. Very, very minimal flash. Look at these huge holes back here for the spoiler. It's kind of ridiculous, but they'll be covered up. And apparently there's pencil marks on the roof. I did not do that. Again, I bought this kit secondhand, but at least their pencil marks and the roof's not fully cut off. I do appreciate that. There's some nice side molding in here. Front bumper looks real nice. The body looks really, really clean. Not too much under hood detail, but that's okay. Chassis, again, minimally detailed, but the detail that is here... It's nice and crisp, so I do appreciate that. Here again is the optional hood with the louvers. Very reminiscent of, uh, of Camaros of the day. Rear bumper looks real nice too. There's a GTZ embossed here and Chevrolet along with the Chevrolet bow tie on, uh, on the right side there. Rear bumper looks looks real nice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks good. The detail looks real good in there. Chrome parts look real nice. Quad four. Some more various engine parts there. This is neat. So this is those are the wheels, which are chrome, and then you paint the center cap body color interesting but then looking at the front of the box and no it's hard to tell if the the inside is all chrome or if the inside's body color and just the lip is chrome here's that giant beretta tail light panel with beretta there in the middle. Rear spoiler with giant pins. It's all right. Okay. Now, this is something I'm not too impressed with. These are BF Goodrich radial TA tires. These are maybe about two thirds the width 
of the tires in the GTU kit. The tread pattern is unimpressive and and in general uh, not not very impressed with these tires. But you get four of those. Here's the decals. Decals look pretty sharp. A couple of underhood and engine compartment decals to put on. Let's see what else we got in the box. Here's a shifter. That looks really good. It's all right. Let's take a look at the instructions. So it looks like there is some underhood detail that gets glued on. So that is pretty nice. Let's take a look at the back side. Custom grill, custom headlight covers. Your really cool rear window louvers and side window louvers. Shows you how to detail the taillight panel. There's the assembly of the wheels and tires. And then decal placement. So that's it for the Beretta. Once again, I would like to thank all of my subscribers and everybody who watches. If you would like a shop card, my contact information is in the description below. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one.